introduce you to me. So I'm Henry Jenkins uh, at the Comparative Media Studies program at MIT, soon to be at USC. And we study media convergence and the way participatory culture connects to it. Now, I've followed your work quite, <laughs> quite a lot um, because what you're particularly interested in uh, is convergence between games, between web, mashing things up. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the panel that you were on this morning at South by Southwest. Well, I did a session with James Paul G., uh, who studies games and learning, and Warren Spector, who's a game designer. And it was sort of looking at what do we learn from games? How does learning take place inside games? How does educational science learn and think about learning in new ways through games? And how do we design games for learning? And so we brought those three worlds together. One of the interesting things that G brought up, actually, was this idea of looking at the game beyond just the software, but looking at it as the, as the community as well. And I know that you've touched on that in your research and your work. Can you talk a little bit about Sure. That? I mean, I think the point of most games is that every game, whether it's platform or online, has an online community. And those online communities are places where people trade information. They begin to learn from each other. They trust each other. It's not about the autonom autonomous learner. And most education is about the person who can learn by themselves and knows everything. And most forms of collaboration in the classroom are cheating. Whereas in the real world, we collaborate with each other all the time. We're collaborating right now, trading thoughts with each other and creating, creating this video. And that's what we've got to, the world we've got to prepare students for. When it comes to preparing students for this kind of participatory environment, this participatory learning, we also have to consider the learning environment, so the teacher context um, and the digital divide that's assumed there, or, or the various other elements, you know, including things like the curriculum. And how do we actually integrate some of these concepts into a practical outcome for learning? Well, I, I think it's recognizing there is a learning ecology now, one that takes place outside of the classroom, in the after-school world, in the classroom. And right now, schools are cutting themselves off from most of the learning ecology by blocking games, by blocking YouTube, by block, putting filters on the computers. They block off the best, the students are most technologically connected from the best ways of learning. And they leave those students who are trapped behind the participation gap from having access to the experiences which prepare the technically literate for the future. So we've really got to rethink that connection in a fundamental way. And so the work we're doing with the MacArthur Foundation on Project New Media Literacies is modeling new ways for curriculum in the classroom, use new materials for after-school learning, and use new materials for self-learning. And we've developed an integrated ecology for learning these skills across all the sectors. MacArthur has been very interesting in this space, actually. They've been doing quite a lot of funding with digital media and learning. And, and indeed, one of the projects that they've been funding uh, is, a, is a new public school, I believe. It's opening later this year. I've written a little bit about it, and I'm wondering if you know more about it. I, yeah, Katie Salem's is sort of the mastermind behind the development of the school. The model is taking game designers and have them redesign education. So it has a design-based, systems-based approach to thinking. Uh, the curriculum is reconfigured. All the school subjects are there, but in a different way. It encourages an integration of thinking across disciplines. There are design challenges at every step along the way. And exams are set up so that students work in teams to solve a complex problem over several days. And they're very interested in the strategies they apply as getting the right answers on the test. So it's a really exciting uh, experiment and what the future of education could look like. It could look like, but obviously there's quite a big buy-in. There's all kinds of, yeah, MacArthur and the New York schools have taken a lot of risk to put this together. Obviously, it's much harder to do that on the low, at, at in schools across the country. In those schools, good teachers are fighting a valiant battle just to be able to access the materials of YouTube in their classroom, which is what we run up against uh, in our work in New Media Literacy. We have a project around Moby Dick, the other day we discovered students couldn't access online resources about Moby Dick, the great American novel, because it had the word dick in it. And it was like this filter system of the schools reduced to the titter-titter stage of sixth grade boys laughing at the teacher because she said dick, rather than actually embracing the full resources of the, of the digital age. One of the concerns, though, that I think that people have is about the pedagogical appropriateness of many off-the-shelf games whether it's you know, the ecologies that they're built in, the economies that they construct, but also in terms of, you can expand that beyond the game world into the internet and how people aren't necessarily critical when they consume this. No, and I think we see this as well, that people are learning through games, but they're not learning to look at games critically. And so that's why I think media literacy education has to be coupled with games if they're gonna be brought into the classroom. But just as a map distorts some information and makes other information visible, 
a game as a system distorts some things and makes other things visible. We just have to learn to read it, much as schools have taught us to learn to read maps. But unfortunately, our schools aren't even teaching us to read maps critically, let aside learning to read games critically. Now, what types of things are you going to be doing at USC? Well, I'm going to be straddling between the Annenberg School of Communication and the Cinematic Arts School. So I'll be teaching courses in things like transmedia storytelling, new media literacies, at both the graduate and undergraduate level. And I will be trying to sort of take some of the best of what we build at MIT and, and introduce it into the world of Hollywood so that I have a regular chance to interface with the industry and uh, report to readers of my blog some of the exciting developments that are taking place out there. Do you expect that you'll still be as engaged with some of the public policy issues? Uh, absolutely. I can't imagine not being engaged in public policy. I mean, you know, I have a, the blog gives me a mouthpiece where I can share my thoughts about some things that are really important to me, education, civic engagement, uh, you know, freedom of expression. These have driven my work for the last 10 years and they're not going to go away just because I've changed coast. Excellent. I'm very, very pleased to hear Great. that. Thank you very much. Sure.